what are Bronsted-Lowry acids and bases, as well as conjugate acid-base pairs? In this video, I will go through five examples with you. We'll work them together, and we'll label the conjugate acid-base pairs, as well as we're going to add in the concept of amphoteric, also called amphiprotic. All right, before we can work those examples together, let's go through the definitions so we can label the conjugate acid-base pairs correctly. A Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that can donate a hydrogen ion, also called a proton, and it'll be a reactant in our reaction. On the product side of that reaction, it will have a pair called a conjugate base. It will differ by one proton or one hydrogen ion, same thing. All right, next, what's a Bronsted-Lowry base? Well, it's a substance that can accept a hydrogen ion, also called a proton, and it'll be a reactant in our reaction. And then on the product side, it will have a pair called a conjugate acid that again will be different by just one hydrogen ion. All right, so let's get started with our first of the five examples. All right, here we go. I actually have it kind of ready a little bit here. So here are two uh, substances. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna write them down and we will label them as an acid or a base, okay? So this is HCl, I'm not gonna worry about the state of matter. And this is water, H2O. And this is a strong, we'll say acid or base, so it dissociates completely. And in a separate video, I will go over strong acids and bases and how to calculate their pH, you can check that out. And what's gonna happen is the chloride ion will be 100% dissociated, and we will have the hydronium ion um, also, so let me just model that with our models here and then we'll label these. So this is going to be the product. Hopefully it'll stay there. It likes to kind of roll off the table. And this is going to be a product. Okay. Let me just grab in another set to label them so you can see which one is differing by a proton. Well, they both are, but how they're differing by a proton. So kind of think, would you label which one as the acid or the base? Remember, Bronsted-Lowry acids donate a hydrogen ion and Bronsted-Lowry bases accept a hydrogen ion. Okay, right, here we go. So this is hydrochloric acid, if you've already recognized that. It is a strong acid, which will mean it'll dissociate completely 100%. Water will act as the base. And on the other side, remember, the acid's partner is a conjugate base, and the base has a partner called a conjugate acid. And what I'd like you to do is also get used to just listing these like almost like a sentence a little bit. So you'd say HCl, has a partner called, or the pair, I always call it a partner, uh, has the chloride as its conjugate base pair to its acid. And our H2O is gonna have a partner called, or a pair called the hydronium ion. So it's called a pair. I keep calling it a partner, but I think of it like that. So they're different by one proton. Let's kind of show where one hydrogen ion with the model. So do you see how this is differing by one hydrogen ion? All right, so that's why that's one of the pairs. And this, sorry, this is the acid, this is the base. And then take a look at these again. Do you see how they're differing by, here's my water, here's my hydronium, how they're differing by one hydrogen ion. That's why I wanted the models to be really important for us to get really good at this, okay? So there's our first set, okay? We're gonna switch this out and I'm gonna keep water actually. And I'll keep the pluses and stuff. But we're going to switch this out with ammonia. So here's what it looks like on the model kit. And we're going to keep water. I'm just going to use a little different uh, model kit here this time. Actually, I have three different ones we're going to use. So take a look. I'm going to write that down. I'm going to take these away because I didn't say what's what yet. So this is ammonia. Again, I'm not going to worry about states of matter. It is a weak strong, or a weak versus a strong. So it is a weak acid or base, so it's gonna have what's called a double arrow reaching chemical equilibrium, which I have a video on if you've never heard of chemical equilibrium. And on the product side, it's gonna have ammonium ion and hydroxide ion. Make sure you have those charges so that the reaction is uh, neutral on both sides for this one, okay? So let me model it first. So what's gonna happen is this water molecule here is going to have the hydrogen ion be pro protonated onto the ammonia. Let me grab these to look at too to start with, okay? Because I think it's nice to look at the partnerships. So think about how you'd label them. 
This is going to act as an acid this time, the water is, and the ammonia is going to act as a weak base because it reaches chemical equilibrium. That also means it makes only partially ions or partially dissociates or ionizes. Remember, the base has a pair that would be an acid, so the ammonium is ion is going to be the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base is going to be our hydroxide, all right? So let's list these again. So our NH3, it's pair is NH4 1 plus so this is the base this is the conjugate acid and our water is going to have a pair it's going to be the oops sorry not the hydronium ion it will be paired with the hydroxide ion okay so again this is acting as an acid so it will have a conjugate base as a pair so again let's look at those one more time Here's our ammonia. Models are super helpful, I think. So you can see again that one uh, proton difference. And then here's my water and here's my hydroxide ion. Okay. It's also what makes this uh, act as a base is that we make hydroxide. And that's again in another video. All right. So let me see. I'm going to see if I can erase these and start again. Um, the only difference this time is we are going to do uh, kind of like a neutralization reaction or an acid base reaction. Not with water though, okay? So I'm gonna keep uh, the, clean this all off, kind of a mess. Keep that, I'm gonna add it with the HCl. So let's try this and it is gonna be a chemical reaction. So let me grab these, I have another model kit. I know you're like, how many model kits do you have? I have a lot, <laughs> okay? Um, so then there's my HCl, it has a tendency to roll off the table. Let me tell you what the products are. So we will make chloride ions and we will make ammonium ions. Okay, a little different than a lot of uh, acid-base reactions that produce water. This one actually does not produce water. So let's kind of look at the modeling here. So here's my chloride. It's going to keep that lone pair. That's why I want to kind of have the line there to show you that that's negative. And this had a lone pair that accepted the proton, and we placed it on top of that to make ammonium. All right, so let's get the other ones in here. So you can kind of take a look at them. Remember, the reactants are the ones that make the products, though. Okay, so then let's label these. I think we already knew that's the base and this is the acid, but remember to label your proper pairs. So my acid, and I kind of put these out of order, and that's okay. So maybe you would have preferred I switch these two. It's fine, okay? You can, you can do that if you'd like, but you might not see that. So this is gonna have the conjugate base ion is the chloride and the acid. Another thing that's kind of nice about that is it's base acid, base acid. So just be okay with that. You can have the products flipped in different spots. All right, so let's list the pairs. List the pairs. Ammonia is the base with ammonium ions. That's the base. This is the acid. And we have our HCl paired with our chloride ions. Again, let's take a look one more time. What do they look like? So here's our NH3. Here's our NH4+, plus, which is ammonia, ammonium. And there you can see there's one proton different. And here's our HCl and our Cl. One hydrogen ion, which again, proton and a hydrogen ion, the same. Talk about that in my KW video, my auto ionization of water. All right, last but not least, I'm actually gonna switch to a different color. We're gonna do kind of a unique one here. And what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you noticed, but water, when we did react with water, it could act as an acid or base. Let me bring in this term, plus this, this ion I have right here, has the possibility to act amphoteric also. Really, water is our main one, but we could have other substances be amphoteric. So you might want to write that definition down. I've got my pairs ready here. And what this molecule, or it's a molecule kind of and an, an ion, in my opinion, is you got you got this bicarbonate ion. Okay. And I'm gonna put it back with water. And water is one of the classic amphoteric substances. But let's do the easy one to model first. This is going to be kind of a weak acid or base reaction. So it'll have what's called equilibrium and it'll have a double arrow. Let's have the easy one to model is what if this turns into H2CO3. That would be one proton different. And then hydroxide. Okay, so think about what that would be labeled as. So let me show you what that would be. So if this is going to turn into hydroxide... I'm just going to have you have an open dot there. Plus, I want this to not roll off the table, so it should stay. There we go. And so there is like a, a lone pair here. It's a negative charge on there that we can have. Notice on this side, 
we have negative one and this side we also have negative one so the charge has to be conserved and then that's called carbonic acid so i'm going to pull this definition off i'll bring it back but let's label them so here they are again here we go almost to the end though this is our fourth example so we've got our um, water is donating a hydrogen ion so it's acting as an acid this time and that means the base is going to accept a hydrogen ion so now, oops, sorry, not that one, this one, <laughs> the base, you're probably, and that's wrong. The base should be that one. And then on this side, remember the base has a conjugate acid, plus I said that was carbonic acid. It's a diprotic acid, which you can add in another video. And then there's our conjugate base. So let's just kind of list those. I'm going to shake this so it's hopefully nice and dark. So we got HCO3 with H2CO3. Again, look how there's one proton or one hydrogen ion different, and then H2O is paired with hydroxide. This is our acid, this is our base. This is our, oop, got the ion. This is our base. This is our acid, conjugate acid, okay? Let me grab those one more time. Here's my base, here's the conjugate acid. And then here is the water, and here is its conjugate base. Okay, now let's go back to this one, start here. What if this acted the opposite, okay? So what if it acted the opposite way? So let's switch this out because bicarbonate could be amphoteric. So let's just get rid of these, okay? Think about what you'd write if it did the other way. So what if it, it acted as the acid and water acted as the base? And this will get to like K values later, Ka and Kb. And we could prove which way bicarbonate kind of prefers to react with water. But for now, let's just, let's look at the possibilities. So that means we're going to have the CO3 2 minus ion called carbonate. And then we'll make, let me just make sure that this is in the frame, okay? They make H3O plus, which is hydronium again. All right, so that means if that's the acid, it's got a conjugate base of the bicarbonate and the carbonate. And then the water will have a conjugate acid with the hydronium ion. So again, I'll hold those up and have it react. So what if this donated? Now this is a hard one to model <laughs> because you can't, there's these model kits don't let me make it look a little bit like hydronium. So there's our hydronium. It's actually not trigonal planar though. It is trigonal pyramidal if it does bond. So let's kind of tip it up like that. Let me bring in the originals here. Here's our bicarbonate ion. And here's our water. And I actually have videos on how to do the dot structures for these uh, if you'd like to look at that too. For uh, dot structures for polyatomic ions. All right, so there's our conjugate acid base pairs. We hold them up. We've got our bicarbonate and our carbonate. And we've got our water and our, <laughs> our hydronium. There it is, okay? And again, it's differing by one proton. All right, so I hope this helped. Let's bring these definitions all back out again and list them for you that if in case you maybe like, you know what, I should have wrote those down. Yeah, you're right. So here we go. Here's our Bronsted-Lowry acid. Here's our Bronsted-Lowry base. Let's get these off of here. It's not going to be perfectly erased, but that's fine. We have a acid always pairing up on the other side as a product with a base. And we have a base always pairing up with an acid, conjugate acid on the reactant to product side. These are the reactants, these are the products. And there is that possibility we've got water being really commonly amphoteric, but there are other substances that can be amphoteric. All right, I hope this video helped you chemists understand how to label your conjugate acid base pairs. I went through five examples, hopefully you have this squared away. If you need other help on acids and bases, pH uh, calculations, or ca you deciding if it's a strong acid or a strong base or a weak acid, weak base, I've got those videos out there for you, as well as chemical equilibrium. All right, good luck, chemists, and hopefully I'll, you know, you'll come back again and see my videos. Make a comment, like, subscribe. That would be wonderful.